Welcome back, Mike Bronzillo, to the show. He's getting ready to fight in Bellator 142. Welcoming Josh Thompson to Bellator, September 19th in San Jose, California. Uh, you obviously have been with Bellator for a long time. Uh, Josh is brand new, uh, his first competition with Bellator, but obviously a seasoned veteran. And then you, you're getting added, added to it. You're going up to San Jose to fight him, which is basically his hometown. So, yeah, it's more, Bellator is more yours than it is his, but his long term relationship with Coker, his long term relationship with living up in San Jose, and that's where the fight is. I mean, you, you got to feel like the chips are getting stacked against you on this one. I mean, you would think that, but in my mind, they're not. You know, the chips are stacked against him. He's coming off a string of three losses. We are fighting in his hometown. The pressure's all on him. You know, I know what it's like to lose three fights in a row, especially at this, uh, you know, place in my career. And that's what he's coming off of. So right now, he's battling his with his mind, I believe, as we all do when we lose. And, uh, you know, I think, I think all the pressure's on him. I'm excited about this. I'm very happy uh, to be a part of this and for this opportunity and to face such a high caliber fighter as Josh. You know, he's amazing. He's one of the best lightweights of all time. And uh, yeah, I think the pressure's all on him. I think this is going to be a battle more for him than for me. I'm ready for this. You know, I think he's probably ready for his way out. And uh, I think I've heard him talk about him. Uh, having one good fight left in him. So we're going to make him revisit those thoughts. When he's in the ring with me, he's going to think, you know what, maybe I should go back to my business and start my company. And maybe even when he's getting his hands wrapped, as early as that, he's going to be thinking, oh, this is my last fight. So we're definitely going to make him think about that. I am for sure. What have you done differently in this training camp to get ready for, for Josh you've done in the past? And you, you said you know what it's like going through a, a three-fight losing streak. You went through three fights uh, and lost them to Riggs, Fernan, and, and Johnson, and now you're on a three-fight win streak with Weisberg, Harris, and Burroughs. So has anything changed in this training camp to get ready for Josh, or is everything pretty much the same? Everything has changed over the last three fights, and each camp has gotten better. I've gotten better. I'm like I'm aging like wine right now. I've said it before, and it's true. This is some real shit. I'm getting better with age. Man, this is crazy because most guys don't. But it's because I wasn't doing all the right things in the beginning. I wasn't training with the right people. I was kind of just doing the same stuff, and it wasn't working for me. And I, and I found out the hard way. So I had to dig deep, do some soul searching, and uh, basically just went back to the basics. I started training with uh, you know, champion Thai boxers, Nathaniel and Samuel Magonia from Revolution Dojo, you know, Woody Figaro. Um, and uh, started training with uh, Helene Gracie Jiu Jitsu. My professor's named Professor Homolo. He's a fifth degree black belt or a master Helian. And uh, I've never done gi. And a lot of people that know me, yourself included, you know, know that, you know, my ground was never a super strong point. I was able to get away from wrestlers and stuff, but I wasn't very technical on the ground. Everything's changed now. I'm learning like I've never learned before, and I'm getting better. They couldn't believe when I went to them that I've made it this far in my career without any gi jiu-jitsu, and they're blown away. And now, <laughs> I'm a blue belt now, but, uh, you know, that's not that's, that's not a big deal to some people, but, hey, I'm learning, and I'm going to get better from here. And my body's fine. I'm training smarter. I'm not sparring anymore. Uh, so there is no there is no injuries that I've got going into the fights now. Uh, I'm crisp, I'm fast, and I'm, I'm deadlier than ever. And that has been one of your biggest problems in the past is that you've always been injured. You've always had some kind of back or knee or shoulder injury going into these fights to the point where it, you went from being no fighter is 100% going into these fights. You just can't be 100%. You're, you're going to be hurt. There's going to be little bangs and bruises. It's just part of the nature of the sport. But you're going from like being maybe a 90, 95% fighter to being like a 70, 75% fighter because you're so injured. So it's good to hear that you're, you're spending more time you know, learning the process, especially at your age. At 36, it's not like... Hey, at 24, you get hurt. You're back in the gym two days later. You're totally fine. You get hurt at 36. It could put you out for a month. I mean, it's a, it's a long time, and it takes a lot longer for the body to recuperate. Is there anything else that's different? Have you changed your diet? Have you changed your strength and conditioning? Anything like that during this time? Oh, of course. Everything's different. Uh, diet's perfect. Uh, I've never dieted before in my life, and uh, you know, I've always eaten whatever I wanted to. And uh, now I'm taking it all serious, take supplements regularly. 
I do have strength and conditioning now, which I've never done before. Uh, everything's better. I'm actually going to go into this fight not hurt, too. Uh, this will be the first fight in a while I haven't been injured. Believe it or not, when I fought for the Legacy Lightweight tur uh, title, I broke my big toe four days prior to that fight. A lot of people that saw that fight were like, oh, wow. Every time Burroughs touched me, I'd go down. Well, we were scared that my bone was going to come out of my skin and the doctor was going to stop it. I showed Michael Chavello and Frank Trigg. I'm oh, not Frank Trigg. That's you. I showed uh, Pat Militich uh, the x-rays and was telling them that my, my, my foot, my toe was broken. They were like, why didn't you tell us that before the fight? It would have made for excellent TV. And I was like, I was scared to death. Y'all were going to pull me from the fight. You know, I'll, my plan was to stick it up his ass. I didn't care. I was going to win that fight. And mentally, I'm just better than ever also. So no injuries, no broken bones going into this fight. Great training camp. The best one I've ever had in my life. And, uh, man, I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a lot of people upset in his hometown. And maybe maybe even I'll, I'll win them over. That's the plan. I know they're going to boo me. I know they're going to do say this, say that. How can they not? They love Josh Thompson. That's his hometown. They're going to have to show major support. But my plan is... Like I always, like I always do is, you know, I'm the underdog and I know that and I embrace that role and I'm going to come through and I'm going to show everybody and turn some hands that night and I'm going to make the fans love me that night. Where do you think Josh Thompson is the most dangerous? Well, to be honest with you, he's just good at everything, putting it all together, I, I believe, you know, I mean, he's not going to show me nothing I haven't seen standing up. I fought some of the greatest stand up fighters, you know, piece them up. I fought some of the greatest jujitsu guys. Uh, survive some of most of them. Uh, I fought some of the best wrestlers, you know, uh, from my time. And uh, he's good at putting everything together. But again, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not. I'm not really worried about what he's going to do. It's just. It's just a battle. Battle of wheels at this point. Who's in better shape? Who wants it more? Uh, everyone's saying, "Oh, you have such a tough. You have such a tough fight ahead of you, Bronzulus." You know. Yeah. Well, so does he. When's the last time someone just kicked my ass, you know, and just broke me? You know, I've never been broke, and uh, especially at this weight class, you know, most people have grinded me out and just won on points, or if I went in the fight and I was out of shape, they beat me like that. But uh, not like this, man. It's going to be totally different, and I'm going to show everybody. I mean, we can talk the talk, but I'm going to walk the walk that night, and everyone's going to see are you in a position now where you're just fighting full time? Or are you still having to do other jobs to maintain the, the mortgage payments? No, I've still been training full time. You know, uh, I've got great sponsors behind me that really believe in me, especially after these last three fights. Things have really taken off for me. Um, Houston's been wonderful. They support me to the fullest. And uh, I've got a great manager, great marketing manager down here, uh, Melissa Wesso. She takes, you know, she makes, makes sure I get sponsors down left and right. And, uh, you know, everything is good. Everything is real good. After I'm done fighting, I'm going to open up my own gym down here in Houston. It's going to be the first mega gym. For some reason, there's no mega gym in Houston. We have so many talented fighters. And everyone's just kind of going to this gym and that gym and that gym. Well, I'm going to be the first one when it's, when it's all said and done. You know, but that's going to be business later. Right now, I'm still focused on becoming world champion. How much, uh, how much more time do you want to spend in the fight game? I want that world title. I want the Bellator world title. And we'll see what happens after that. You know, I can't stop until I make good on my dad's last wishes, which was to go become champion. I gave him my word. And, you know, I've said this time and time, you know, I can't stop till, I, till I'm finished and accomplish what I said I was going to do. You know, that's one thing about the Greeks mentality. Once we put our mind to it, ain't no stopping us. All right, last thing before we let you out of here, Mike, I know you got to get ready to training camp, but uh, I saw a photo, uh, I think it was either Facebook or Instagram, I'm not sure which, but I saw a photo of you and your brother um, like out for a bike ride or out hanging out or whatever. Do, does your brother help you with your training camp at all, or is he just a supporter of Mike in general? My brother, he's a big supporter of me, you know, all the time. He works full-time job. He works in the hospital, uh, you know, field. So I beat him up. He takes care of him. He fixes him up. But uh, when... Whenever he gets free chance, he's always he's always down. He's always helping me riding bikes, training, whatever he can do. Uh, he'll even be in my corner for this fight. You know, it's the biggest moment of my life. You're gonna see a guy looks just like me in my corner. That's my brother. He's not. We're not twins. He's five years older. But uh, everyone thinks we're twins. But yeah, my brother's awesome. And uh, for all the love and support he's shown me over the years, I, I couldn't I couldn't think of no better way than uh, to make it up to him than bring him there in my corner.
Yeah, my mom won't be able to be there. She's in another state doing her arts and craft show. So, you know, hopefully that'll all come to a stop after this fight. And, you know, we'll see what happens, though. All right. That's Mike Monzillo. getting ready to fight Josh Thompson coming up here in Bellator 142. Thanks, Mike, for getting getting back with me. I know it's been a, it's been a long, tough uh, training camp for you. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking some time with us to get uh, get together. Have fun. Have fun the last week, man. We'll talk again soon. Thank you, Frank. The pleasure's all mine. Thank you very much, Frank. You're awesome.